gentlemen. Expansion now is out of the question. Production must be kept down to where it is if we're to keep our profits up. What do you mean you can't find him? Blake should have been here an hour ago. I'm sending Blake to Washington to kill that Senator Gilmore's crackpot legislation. Gentlemen, uh, perhaps we should voluntarily open some of the factories we shut down before the government does it for us. That's splendid, Gorman, splendid. Open the factories, flood the market, give our product away, and then call our firm National Charities Incorporated. What? Uh, no buts, Gorman. Well, what about Blake? Don't tell me why you can't get him, get him. Blake! Jim! We've been trying to get you on the phone for hours, Jim. Yeah, so Roger kept telling me. Excuse me. Well, what's the matter? Sick? Well, a whole lot of things. You're not interested in my health, George. What do you want? Well, it's, uh, it's about that TRC bill, Jim. You've got to go to Washington right away. You realize, George, the trout season opens tomorrow? Yes, it's open season on national canneries, too. But that bill pillions. You take money too seriously. And you don't? Trouble with you, George, is you've gone too far. You're forgetting all decent business methods. You organize, National. And you're running it like a cheap racket. That cheap racket is paying you one of the highest attorney fees in the country. Oh, listen, Jim, you've got to go. You're in National as deep as any of us. Yeah, I guess so. That's the way to talk. Well, when do I leave? Plane out of Newark in an hour. Go the limit, Jim. Talk turkey to them. The last boys who tried talking turkey to them in Washington are thinking it over on bread and water in Atlanta. The methods are all wrong, George. I'm afraid you're going to end up right where you started, back in a vegetable market. Hello, George. Hello, Oka. Have one? Thanks. I just stopped by to see Jim for a moment. Not me? How flattering. I telephoned you yesterday. Yes, I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. You promised to be at the Pattersons' night before last, remember? That's right, I did. I was so busy, I... At the Shore Beach Club? Well, I... Oh, don't bother, George. Well? What do you mean about the beach club? Yes. I'm flattered by the checkup, Bilka. <laughs> what are you doing down here this time of the day? Business. Jim's leaving for Washington. For how long? About a week. Patty's taking her yacht to New London for the boat races this weekend. That ought to be exciting. It will be. Oh, quick change, artist. Let's go. No, no, don't bother. I'll find my own way to New York. An expensive guest, George. Oh, I did that. Yes, I know. Goodbye.
Mr. Sartre's phone, sir, to congratulate you on your victory. He wishes to see you tomorrow in the office. Oh, he does. But he won't. This time I am going fishing. <coughs> yes. So you think you're coming too, eh? <coughs> oh, no, my lad. You're staying at home. You heard what I said. You're staying home. Beautiful, isn't it, Pete? Just two miles from town, eh? Now, the sensible thing to do would be to stop at a hotel, get some breakfast, and come right back. Who wants to be sensible? That's why there are no trout in the stream. Breaking the game laws, huh? Why, you little... The one you there goes my head. Oh, no, Ringo. I'm taking you to the game ward. You mind your own business. I know what I'm doing. Well, if you know you're breaking the law, that makes it just so much worse. You won't get away. Which way to the main street? Two blocks over that way. Yeah, where did you catch that trout? Didn't catch it. Charlotte Brown gave it to me. Oh, where is she? Just around the corner. She won't give you none, I'll bet you. There you are, Mrs. Perkins. The hunting season would open, we get off this fish diet. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. All right. There's a beauty for you, Mrs. Green, right there. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Jones. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you all that's left. There you are, right there. Four nice ones. Miss Brown. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Will you wait a minute? Excuse me, young lady. Uh, about those fish. Show it to the game warden. Oh, no, but please, allow me to stay. Keep quiet. Why should I? All I want to do is... Shh, shh. Shut up or get out. What is it? Town meeting. When is this meeting going to start? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you all know Mr. Clinton, who runs our bank here in Springvale. <laughs> it's 
no use telling you folks about the banking business in this neck of the woods. There just ain't none to talk about. Well, what's the matter with the cannery? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there ain't much to tell about that either. If Congress had passed the Trades Reconstruction Bill, I could have loaned you the money, the government would have insured the loan, and 1,500 of you men and women would have been earning a living again. Since that bill was killed, our hands are tied. What are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. I can't say about that. I can only hope it will be brought up again when Congress meets next year and passed. We simply got to wait. Wait, wait. wait. We can't wait any longer. Get back there, Reed. That cannery's got to open. If it don't, we men don't work. And you farmers don't sell your produce. Wait. Waiting ain't for the working men. You can't wait when you're hungry. <laughs> if that factory don't start up again, Springvale will become a ghost town. You'll all have to move out. Where, I don't know. But this town will become a graveyard of empty homes. There's been a heap of living in Springvale, 160 years of it. But if we gotta give it up, let's die fighting, not just sitting back and hoping. <laughs> it's your cannery, Miss Brown. You're responsible. I've been expecting something like this. That's why I came here. When the cannery had to close, it broke my father's heart. It killed him. The depression forced the prices down, and when he kept hanging on, he went bankrupt. And you all know it. You got going. We want work, that's what we want. People ought to realize, just as I'm beginning to, that this sort of thing is going on in a whole lot more towns than just Springville. Well, Miss Brown is to blame for what's happening in the other places, is she? Say, what's he trying to sell us? Your real enemies are racketeers like national canneries. Who defeated the Trades Reconstruction Bill, Miss Brown? No. Oh. Lots of people you've never even heard of. Dozens of high-priced lobbyists. Men like, like James Blake, Long Island, Park Avenue, Wall Street. That's America's boundaries to them. <laughs> Say, mister, just who are you? What difference does that make? Well, we'd like to know. What's your name? Why, uh, Carter's my name, James Carter. Well, Mr. Carter, what are you doing here? Mr. Brown invited me. What for? Yeah. All right, all right. I've been invited here to study the situation. And believe me, there's no reason to give up hope. Well, what are you going to do? I'll tell you when I've seen the cannery. Oh, lady in distress. You have a peculiar sense of humor, Mr. Carter. Those people are desperate. Yes, I know. <laughs> I have to tell him I don't know you. No, no, please don't do that. Let's go and see the cannery. So, you see, all the machinery's really in fine shape, and it wouldn't cost much to get started. That is, if we did it on a cooperative basis. Is that what you intended doing? Yes, if the TRC bill had gone through. It was the only way. Everyone would share in the work and the profits. The farmers, the cannery workers, and, well, the whole community. What about the factory? I'm giving it, and I'll also work in it. I see. Are you really interested, Mr. Carter? Yes, I am. Why? But remember my mentioning Blake? Yes. I once knew him pretty well. We went to college together. He wasn't a bad sort in those days. Ambitious, but decent. Well, success changed all that. He became hard and indifferent. Now, I'm afraid he's little more than a cheat. You sound almost as though he cheated you. 
beginning to think he did. You haven't told me yet what your business is. Oh, nothing, really. I made a little money and then retired. At your age? Why, a man of 50 ought to be... What? 50? But I'm not even 40. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but that's what comes of doing nothing. Well, what would you suggest? Do something to help open the cannery. Compete with national canneries? You know, hard work could make a new man out of you. <laughs> it's not funny. Fighting national wouldn't be any joke. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't it? You know, I'm beginning to like the idea better every minute. I hope you like it well enough to do something about it. I will. I don't know quite what yet, but I will. Thanks, Mr. Carter. Goodbye. Excuse me, sir. Huh? Oh, thank you. Just a chicken sandwich, sir. To take away the taste of the milk. Now, Roger. Yes, sir. Have you ever thought of disappearing? Disappearing? Why, no, sir. Once the vaudeville show, sir, I saw a man grieve over <laughs> the grave. <laughs> no, I don't mean anything like that. I don't mean disappearing into thin air. Maybe I do. Sounds extremely uh, uncomfortable, sir. Fishing bed? Well, I don't know. What happened? I started out fishing and ended up thinking. Just can't get away from business, can you? No, I was thinking about us. You know, we've made the most awful mess of everything. 
Really? Well, no, we have. We live such empty sort of lives. It's the only life I know, and I like it. I don't believe you do. You, you haven't tried anything else. Don't you think we could... We might get out of all this? But do you realize, Ilka, that in the last five years, we haven't spent two weeks together? I detest fishing. I guess it's hopeless. Whatever it is brought us together ten years ago is certainly dead now. Well? well I suggest you divorce me. I'm not sure I want to. Why not? A couple of months ago you That was a couple of months ago. Mr. Blake, liquidate everything. I need ready cash. Yes, but may I First suggest... Thing, sell all my bonds. Steel, too? Yes, then sell all my mortgages. I'm taking a flower in tin. Tin? Oh, I see. Hey, is it that good? Even better. Oh, and uh, deposit my cash to the regular account as fast as you liquidate. Am I getting in on this one, Jim? Sorry, not this time. Handling this alone. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Sell for Mr. James Blake the following securities. 2,000 shares, Hercules Steel. Sell for James Blake, 5,000 shares, Western Copper. I packed everything you laid out, sir. All right, put him in the car. Take it. Now will you tell me where you're going? I'm getting out of here. But you haven't told me where. That's right. What's the matter with you? From now on, you're going to be free whether you like it or not. Sir. Well, didn't I give you your instructions? Yes, sir. But she says she'd come over if you don't speak to her. All right. Hello, Elka. Oh, well, that's impossible. But you must help me. Why, well, he's behaving like a lunatic. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. Everyone knows what's wrong. He tried to pull a fast one on his friends, and he lost a fortune in tin. Why, he even had to sell me his shares at National. George, I must see you. If you're not at the boathouse in 10 minutes, I'll come over there. Yano. 
Yes, sir. Tell Andrew to bring out the speedboat immediately. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mrs. Blake. Mr. Sardos just couldn't make it. He sent me to tell you and to find out if there's anything I can do. I'll see Mr. Sardos about that. Oh, no, you won't, Mrs. Blake. I'm sorry, but that's why I'm here. Boys and eat light. You get just as sick on the bus as you do on a train. <laughs>
tell about them society people. Oh, they'll catch them all. Can I rent a car around here? I've got to get back to New York at once. You bet. There's a garage and labor table down the road a piece. Can you phone them? Yes, sir. Just a minute. Uh, get me Slim's garage, will you? I'll call you, mister. You know, those people don't live like regular human beings. You hurt one thing, it's another. Yeah. News flash. Blake murder case solved. Sensational discovery was made of the charred remains of Jane Blake a few hours ago at the bottom of a ravine near Burley's Falls, New York, where his car had plunged down 60 feet from the bridge, caught fire, and burned into a twisted mass of steel. Immediate investigation revealed that Blake had been speculating unwisely and had lost the major part of his immense fortune. Probably driven insane, he killed his wife and then drove wildly to his death. Well, I ain't surprised. I said I ain't surprised. Are you? No. Oh. Guess you took the only way out, though. Think so? Sure. If you ain't got nothing to live for, you're better off dead. Yes, but what if a man has got something to live for? That's different. Then nothing should stand in his way. All ready, folks. We're going on. Hey, mister, that car of yours is out there waiting for you. Thanks. I, I've changed my mind. Brown, there's a man from the railroad here to see you. Well, fine. Have him come right in. How do you do? How do you do? I'd like to see Mr. Carter, if I may. Well, he's busy right now. Is there something I can do? Well, my name is George Sartus. Mr. Carter has definitely told your agents that we are not selling. But you don't understand. You don't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm expecting something. A railroad executive? Yes, National has made a little investment. Have Mr. Carter come right up, please. Now, we're ready to pay a fair price for Springvale. Yes, to close it down. Oh, I think Mr. Carter will be interested in our proposition. I know he won't. Without the railroad, you can't move your merchandise. Mr. Carter will see about that. Well, I'd like to discuss it with him anyway. Jim, National Canneries has bought the branch line. This is Mr. Sarthouse. This is Mr. Carter, Mr. Sarthouse. How do you do? Your face seems very familiar. Could we have met somewhere before, Mr. Carter? I doubt it. Sit down, Mr. Carter. Sit down. Well, what's your proposition, Mr. Sardis? We're buying your canneries. Really? Otherwise, you'll have to close down. Oh, no. You've got to carry our freight, and at a reasonable price. Oh, have we? The Railroad Commission will force you to. What makes you think that? When you bought that road, you also bought a franchise. Your company is solvent. If you don't run that line, you're liable for damages in any court in this country. You seem to know a great deal about law, Mr. Carter. Well, uh, everybody knows that much about law, Mr. Sardis. Well, here's something else that everybody should know about law. Court action can be delayed for years. I'll drag this case out until it reaches the Supreme Court. It also reaches Senator Gilmore's committee, huh? Before he can interfere, 
I'll run this place into the ground. Better be careful or else he'll run himself straight back into a vegetable market. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. What are we going to do? Well, we'll not only force him to run the railroad, but we'll sue him for every day that he doesn't. Conspiracy and restraint of trade. But Jim, he's right. It may take years to clear up that case in court. We have to start deliveries in three days. And we will, too. We'll deliver them to the main line in trucks. Trucks? Well, there's no place to rent them. Well, we'll buy them. Jim, are you crazy? That would cost a fortune. Well, I've got a fortune. Darling, the last five minutes have given me all the confidence in the world. In what? In James Carter. Come on. Where? The bank. Well, I think I'd better tell Joe about the change in plans. I'll meet you in 20 minutes. Thank you. Yes, I have another proposition that might interest you. Thanks. Well, what is it? If you don't mind, I won't come straight to the point, as this new proposition requires a little explaining. Until about four months ago, I was associated with a very clever man. Really, your anecdotes don't interest me very much, Mr. Salas. Oh, I think this one will. This man suddenly lost his entire fortune, or let it be thought that he did. Then he killed his wife and committed suicide, or let it be thought that he had. Quite a thinker, eh? Yes, it's too bad he didn't think of just one more thing. In making his escape, he piled up enough conclusive circumstantial evidence to hang him for the murder of his wife, if he were alive, even if he tried the case himself. Oh, uh, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you, he was a very clever lawyer. What's all this got to do with the railroad? Oh, nothing. Only I might forget this little story if he forgot about Springvale. I don't know what you're talking about. And I don't know why you did all this, but I do know you're not going to get away with it. I, either you get out of Springvale and let Springvale die a natural death, or you'll die an unnatural one. Making just one mistake, George. The James Blake you knew is dead. Henry, we'll buy every truck in town. <laughs> That'll make three. Well, we're not going to stop here. The truck agency in Milford will pick up five or six more there. In fact, we'll clean out every truck in the county. Then in 24 hours, with the warehouse is emptied. And then the next day, there's oh, no, no reason why. Let's not think beyond tomorrow. That man is James Blake. He's wanted for the murder of his wife. I'm sorry, but he's sworn out a warrant. I'm afraid I'll have to... This is a frame-up. He's from National Canneries. I called the New York police. One Mr. Car... Blake. When Jim first came here, we didn't know nothing about him, and he did look something like they said. Use this where we've met. But Jim... I hate to do this. We'll have to look in that bag. What did I tell you? You'll have to hold this for evidence. Come on, Jim. <laughs> the main thing is time, Mike. Get it over as soon as possible. We're all ready. Just waiting for the word to go. Well, go. Come on, Andrew. Come on in. You look fine. Well, I don't have to tell you your business. The main thing is time. Bill, you start in the hotel lobby. Right. McGraw and Petrosky, you take the main street. Okay. Steve, you the saloon, and Joe the pool hall. Pauline and Mary, you work the markets in the backyards. Okay. Now, come on, let's okay. get going, quick. Okay, boy. 
We better save our pennies. It's gonna be a hard winter. Oh, the cannery will open again. Not from what I hear. Anyway, I do think we ought to share in the canned goods up there. If it's a cooperative, it belongs to everybody who works there. I said that very thing to my husband just last night. Say, did you guys hear there's a creditor of the cannery in town trying to put a lien on the place? Who said so? Well, I'm only telling you what I heard. They'll take this stuff, and you guys will be left holding the bag. <laughs> Some trick, all right. You wait here, Andrew. I'll be back. Yes, sir. you in this little provincial hamlet. You were still driving for Mr. Sartell? Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I came down to identify Mr. Blake. Yeah. It's Mr. Blake, all right. Yeah. I say, isn't it frightfully exciting? Oh, what about a little spot or something to calm the old nerves, what? Yeah, I could use it. Come on down here with me. There's a nice, great little place down here. Be sure, that guy Blake was a millionaire. Why, he worked for National Canneries. That's where he got all of his dough. Well, I'll bet money the whole thing was a frame-up between them. That's what the paper said. Big corporation lawyer, eh? Sure, we guys got roped in. Wait till the creditors hit this burg tomorrow, and there won't be a can of beans left in the joint. You think so? Swindle, huh? Why, certainly. If that place is cooperative, why, we're entitled to an equal share of the stuff that's in there, ain't we? Well, well no, no, no. no, Andrew, I really am delighted that we met here. A bartender. We have a little service. Oh, we have Andrew. Straight whiskey. One straight whiskey and one with a little seltzer water. Thank you. Well, Andrew, we really ought to see more of each other. Our masters having so much in common, you know? Yeah. Yes. Let's think. I got a hot tip that the guy in town right now that's going to take that stuff out of the warehouse. Oh, you're crazy. He can't. That's a cooperative. Belongs to all of us. Well, it don't belong to us if we can't pay the bills. They closed the place down three days ago, didn't they? Well, it'll never open again. Why, that means that all of us who've worked there for months are going to be robbed. Well, you're going to let them take it? No! no! Well, we can't stop them. They'll sell it off with a debt. Not if we get there first. That's right. Divide That's it up right. among ourselves. That's it. Uh, we can't break in. It's oh. against the law. Ain't nothing unlawful about it. Just think about last winter when you hadn't anything to eat. Sheriff! What's the matter? Sheriff, I've got to get out of here. Oh, now, Jim, you've got to be reasonable. Please, Floyd, there's something I must do. I'll come back. Now, what would it look like? I'm an officer of the law. I can't go around turning people loose. I tell you what, suppose I get a deck of cards and we'll have a game of casino. That'll relieve your mind. Listen, Floyd. In a couple of hours, everything we've done in Springville is going to be smashed. All the work the men and women in this town have put in, all their hopes, all their chances of a decent living are going to be destroyed. I'll come back, man, honestly. I'll be back before night. You know, a funny thing happened here once. Prisoner. Dang nice fella, except he took advantage of me. I had my back turned. Never suspected. And he grabbed my keys out of my back pocket when I wasn't looking. Don't you see, Earl? It's up to you farmers. If you don't act now, you'll be right back where you were six months ago with your crops rotting in the field. I'll start with Bob Coates and spread the word. Good. I'll pick you up later. All right.
just a minute, you. Hey, what's the bar of your cells made out of? Rubber bands? The governor signed the extradition, Sheriff. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, all up. A few minutes ago, you allowed yourself to be scared into a panic, ready to destroy everything you spent months to create. And now you're going to do the same thing over again. But you're forgetting that this place isn't only yours. It belongs to thousands of poverty-stricken towns with their men and women on relief. Now, they demand the right to work for a decent living, and it's up to you boys to help them to get it. But what about you? This idea is bigger than any one man. I can't help you, nor can national canneries nor anyone else stop you. Not if you work together. It's up to you. Whatever you do here, now, this very minute, will affect every town, city, and village in this country tomorrow. When this was a frontier, your grandfathers died to protect this town. This factory is now a fort on a new frontier. What are you going to do? Destroy it or defend it? Good. Now listen. The farmers are lending their trucks. They'll help you to load them and deliver them to the main line. All right, boys, now, now load those trucks. Good luck to you. Come on, boys. Don't you? Don't worry, darling. Hi there. Wait. Play. Wait a moment. I've had the most awful time. Oh, Mr. Blake, sir, I've had the most appalling time, the most dreadful time, sir. But it was worth it. I succeeded. I got the truth out of him. What are you talking about, Roger? Oh, wait till I show you, sir. Come on up, you. Come on up. Get up. Now, speak. Speak, you... you... you mug. It's a lie. You can't pin it on me. I didn't kill Mrs. Blake. It was an accident. She slipped and hit her head on the cement. There you are, sir. Now, if there's any other little thing you'd like me to do, sir? Thank you, Roger. I think you've done pretty well already. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, pardon me, sir. I'm all a bit nervous, obviously. This guy don't live in town. He said he was paid to start the riot. Yeah? Well, I got a pretty good idea who paid him. Take him away. Over. What's the idea? You're under arrest for inciting the riot. Why, you can't. Move over. Washington tonight and see Senator Gilmore? No. Nope. You've got to wait till tomorrow. But why? We're getting married tonight. What? <laughs> Come on. 